What's up fellow creators? It is Aaron here and wasn't that effect awesome? I loved it. I first saw it here on Andrew James's channel with his Anyone Create video. Really cool video. I highly recommend you guys check it out. Anyways, if it's your first time here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below. And with that out of the way, let's get to the tutorial. First, what you want to do here is you want to get some uh, images so you can use for the wall effect itself. I went to a website called pixabay.com and I looked up graffiti footage. So I typed in graffiti here and it's really cool. You have all kinds of choices you can pick from and it's all royalty free. Uh, it's really cool. Um, obviously you have a lot of other websites you have to pay for but this website has a lot of free stuff that uh, people will put on there and really really cool and handy. They even have video footage which I've used a couple of times. But anyways, once you get your pictures, we'll jump into After Effects here and get your pictures imported and your footage, which obviously you want to have footage with at least two walls. I actually recommend like alleys. Once you get all that done, the first thing we want to do here is we want to go ahead and drag each individual picture onto our timeline here. I have about six here. And you want to select all your pictures, right click on them and hit pre-compose. We'll name this random pictures and just press OK. And now once you get that created, you want to double click on that new composition. And you want to go to each layer here. I'm going to actually scale these to make them really, really huge here, each picture. You don't have to do this. I just did it because uh, I wanted to make the effect look unique and try to change it up. So now that you have all your pictures set, we want to go, we want to zoom in here on your timeline, which gives you your seconds or your frames. Not seconds, my bad. And you want to go about three or four frames here. And we'll select all these layers and we'll hit Control Shift D and we'll delete all of the um, other layers. So that gives us about a three second or three frames, not three seconds, three frames per clip. So we'll just drag these all to line them up here. Like so. We'll zoom out a little bit here. And once you do that, you're going to select all the layers again. We're going to um, copy them by hitting Control D here. And we will drag these out here. And we'll go to these new, let's see, make sure, okay, yeah. We want to go to the new clips here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move them around a little bit. And this will uh, make it so it's a little bit harder to detect that it's a repeating pattern here. I'll go up here this time here and this one. We'll do more of a yellowish blue here because it was red. Now you, what you do is you want to select all your pictures. We'll zoom this all the way out. We want to control D this again and we're going to move these, these all the way at the top here. There we go. Makes this a little bit easier. And then we'll control D again. We'll move these all the way to the top. Continue with this all the way to the end of the timeline. The reason why you want to do this is because if you don't, your video will end and it just stop the effect, which is what you don't want to do. But once you get that all done, we'll just play it here real quick to see what it looks like. Yeah, there we go. So we got this cool little random picture effect here. So we'll go back to our main composition and you'll see that the pictures are all here uh, and the animation's solid. So what we need to do first is we need to go to that composition that we made, random pictures, and we're going to go over here to effects and we're going to type in power and you're going to find a effect called CC power pin. Really cool effect I learned just recently. And what this is for is it actually allows us to skew and distort. And we're going to line this up with this wall here on the left side. And I'm going to get hit T here on the keyboard to bring up the opacity. And we're going to take it down a lot just so we can see what we're doing. And we'll go back to the pen tool here, the CC power pen. And we're going to just line this up. Now you want to make sure these lines, if you know anything about perspective, you want to make sure they're straight and you get the angles right or it's not going to look right on the wall. So. You want to make sure that line it up properly here and that looks good and in my case I have to mask out the windows and the doors and stuff but if I would do that right now it actually throws everything off because the effect messes up masks so what we need to do here is first we need to get the opacity back to 100. We want to right click on this composition and we'll make it a pre-composition. We want to move all attributes into new composition and we're going to name this left wall and press OK and now what we can do is we can go back here to opacity and we'll bring it back down and now we can actually apply a mask to this. So um, Andrew didn't have to do that in his video because he didn't have windows and stuff. But if you have this stuff, we can mask it out. So once you get that done, we can go here and start masking and I'll mask this window and I'll fast forward through this because it's a 
There's a lot of stuff here I gotta mask out. Okay, now once you get that all masked out, which that took me a second, um, you notice that it looks off because it's only showing everything that we mask out. Well, we want the opposite. So what we wanna do here is you wanna go into your masks and all your masks here, we'll just change them to subtract. So there you go. Now we'll bring the opacity back to about 30, 40-ish here. We're gonna change the blending mode for the left wall to screen and we'll tweak the opacity and, and you can change any other settings here. I'm gonna take it down a little bit more because it's a little bright. And then we scrub through this here and you'll see, there it is. There's that cool little effect. We'll play this real quick. That's pretty much the effect, but let's go ahead and do the effect on the other wall here. So we'll go back to project here and we're gonna bring the random pictures back in. Again, same concept, we wanna hit T, to bring the opacity, we'll bring it down really low. And we're gonna add the CC power pin to this layer as well and do the same thing, but the opposite wall. Here we go. Now, right click on the random pictures, pre-compose thing, and we're gonna name this right wall. And I'm gonna screen it. I'm gonna hit T, make it opacity a little bit so I can work with this, my mask, and now I'm gonna start masking out. And let's play it through and see what we have. Well, anyways, there you guys have it. That's how you do that cool wall effect that Andrew James did. If you like this video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.